Hello everyone, this is R.S. Miller at TheEndTimeNews.org and today is October 25th, 2012. Allegedly, Israeli jets bomb Sudanese munitions factory. Sudan has accused Israel of bombing a military arms factory threatening retaliation after resulting fire killed two people and injured a third. Referring to the attack which occurred about midnight local time on Tuesday at Yarmouk Military Manufacturing Facility in South Khartoum, Ahmed Osman, Cultural and Information Minister, said, We think Israel did the bombing. In his comments on Wednesday, he said, We reserve the right to react at a place and time we choose. Osman said, Four radar evading aircraft were involved in the attack. It took troops several hours to contain the blaze. On Thursday, a top Israeli defense official labeled Sudan as a dangerous terrorist state following the accusations that his country was responsible for the attack. Sudan is a dangerous terrorist state. To know exactly what happened, it will take some time to understand, Amos Jalad told Israel's army radio. Asked directly whether Israel was involved in the attack, Jalad, who serves as Director of Policy and Political Military Affairs at the Defense Ministry, refused to reply directly. Now there's more to this article as well as a video that you guys might want to watch and I'll place a link in the box below. According to Extinction Protocol, Sudan immediately blamed Israel, which was coy about whether it had launched the attack. There is nothing Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak said I can say about this subject. Israel has previously sent its fighter bombers on deep strike operations against Sudanese truck convoys carrying weapons suspected of being destined for the Gaza Strip. Some Israeli media claimed Iran's Revolutionary Guards owned the Khartoum munitions factory south of the Sudanese capital. In an article by Depkafal, they report that the Yarmouk complex near Khartoum, which was bombed Wednesday by four fighter bombers, recently went into manufacturing ballistic surface-to-surface -surface Shihab missiles under license from Tehran. Western intelligence believes they were meant as Tehran's strategic reserve stock in case its own ballistic arsenal was hit by Israeli bombers. No information was available about the comings and goings of Iranian missile specialists to Khartoum or whether Tehran planned to stage missile attacks against Middle East targets from Sudan. Eighty rockets were fired from Gaza Wednesday. Israeli leaders warn of more extensive military response. Palestinian terrorists in Gaza continued their rocket assault on Israel Wednesday afternoon after a three-hour pause in the attacks, which have seen dozens of missiles target the south in the past two days. More than 80 rockets and shells had been fired into Israel Wednesday by late afternoon. Israeli leaders warned of a much intensified military response if the attacks continued. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke of a more extensive response. Education Minister Gideon Sayar said the army was ready for a far, far greater and wider response. Foreign Minister Avigor Lieberman said Israel would not maintain its restraint for many more days and that Israel was facing a serious escalation. A salvo of eight rockets fell on Hof Ashkelon just after midday, shattering the quiet that had descended for a few hours after a series of rocket attacks in the morning. Another two projectiles were fired at the Habel Eshkol area. In late afternoon, another missile strike was recorded. There were no reports of injuries or damage in the latest attacks. Proof that Russian missiles are in Gaza on October 12th, Israeli surveillance cameras spotted the distinctive contrail of an anti-aircraft missile being fired from Gaza at an Israeli helicopter. The missile missed, either because the missile was defective or because of the anti-missile systems carried by all Israeli aircraft operating over Gaza worked. 
The media reported that it was an older SA-7 Russian-type missile, but no one could be sure. Earlier this year, Israel spotted in Gaza some of the 480 Russian, Russian Igla S, SA-24 shoulder-fire anti-aircraft missiles that had been sold to Libya and stolen from military warehouses during the rebellion last year. Older SA-7s were taken as well. Some SA-7s and SA-24s have shown up in Gaza in the hands of Islamic terrorist group Hamas. Most Israeli and NATO helicopters and aircraft are equipped with missile detection and protection lasers or flares systems. Such systems on Israeli AH-64 helicopter gunships operating over Gaza are thought to have defeated several SA-24 attacks in the last year, but unlike the recent attack, there was no photographic proof. Syrian rebels armed with U.S.-made Stinger missiles. Russia's defense chief said there's growing evidence that shows Syrian rebels now have U.S. manufactured shoulder launched surface to air missiles known as man pads in their arsenal. Armed Forces Chief of Staff of Russia, General Nikolay Markarov, said on Wednesday the Russian General Staff has informed that the militants fighting against Syrian government forces have man pads produced in various countries, including U.S. made stingers. According to Makarov, Washington denied supply of the missiles to the insurgents in Syria. The Russian general demanded an investigation over how these missiles were delivered into Syria for use against Bashar al Assad's government. Japan sees new Chinese activity near islands. Chinese ships have entered waters near a group of disputed islands for the first time in three weeks, promoting a strong protest from Japan, which says China's air force also has sharply increased its operations in the area. Japan's Coast Guard said the four Chinese surveillance ships were spotted within a 22-kilometer zone that Japan considers its territorial waters near one of the disputed islands in the East China Sea early on Thursday morning. The ships refused to leave, saying the area was Chinese territory, according to Atushi Takahashi, a spokesman for the Coast Guard's headquarters in Okinawa, which has jurisdiction over the islands. He said it was the first time Chinese ships had entered the territorial waters since October 3rd. Japan's foreign ministry launched a strong protest with China's ambassador in Tokyo. Defectors ignore North Korea's military strike threat. South Korean activists have defiantly launched tens of thousands of balloons carrying anti Pyongyang leaflets into North Korea despite Pyongyang's thre threats of a merciless military strike. On Monday, Seoul police blocked the propaganda exercise planned by the North Korean defectors, citing security concerns, but infuriating the protesters. A number of activists then moved to another part of the border area to float balloons carrying 120,000 leaflets critical of North Korea's new leader, Kim Jong-un, and his country's alleged human rights abuses. Civic groups in the South regularly drop leaflets over the border with messages criticizing the Kim dynasty and urging the North Korean people to rise up against repression. The leaflets also carry news about rebellions in other parts of the world, including events of the Arab Spring. South Korea's attempt to block the protest this time has been viewed as unusual with analysts saying it reflects Seoul's desire to avoid any destabilizing clash ahead of the South Korea's presidential election in December. Stability is the number one priority in Seoul right now, said Yang Moon Jin, a professor of the University of North Korean Studies. I think the president felt that if he lets tensions further escalate, he will see his political legacy tarnished at the end of his term and be blamed for leaving a diplomatic burden on the incoming administration. North Korea has threatened strikes in the past, but Friday's statement was unusually strong with its specific naming of time and location 
coupled with a warning to local residents to evacuate the area. The surrounding area will become targets of direct firing, the Korean People's Army had said in a statement. U.S. Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta sounded a stern warning to North Korea during a press briefing at the Pentagon this week. I assured the minister that the United States stands fully committed to the security of the Republic of Korea. Make no mistake, we will provide the forces and the military capabilities needed to help maintain security on the Korean Peninsula. And we are also committed to deepening and adapting our defense cooperation to meet evolving security challenges in the region. The focus of much of our discussions was North Korea. North Korea remains a serious threat to both of our nations and a serious threat to regional and global stability. Over the past year, North Korea has continued its pattern of defiance and provocative actions, including the unsuccessful test of a ballistic missile capability. Minister Kim and I reaffirmed that North Korean aggression or military provocation will not be tolerated and that we will continue working shoulder to shoulder to demonstrate our combined resolve. Friends, we are living in the last days and the Lord Jesus Christ is returning soon. World War III is about to start, or if you prefer, it can be called the Sixth Trumpet War, Revelation 9.13, in which one-third of mankind will be killed. That's over two billion people. We don't exactly know when it will start, but what's unfolding in the Middle East right now is definitely part of this end-time scenario. The alliances are being formed and the flames of hatred are being fanned, and it's only a matter of time before it explodes into an all-out war with Russia and multiple Arab nations on one side and the U.S. and NATO along with Israel on the other. World War III has been prophesied and it will certainly happen. It could in fact take place before the end of this year or perhaps it's still several years down the road. We simply do not know. But one thing is for sure. War is coming and time is getting short. Are you prepared to meet your maker? Are you saved? Follow the link below and pray the prayer of salvation with a sincere heart and you will be saved. It is my prayer that God bless each and every one of you with ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name, amen.